Hey guys. Hi. Welcome to the rollout. I'm Lindsay Russo. And I am Genevieve Marie. Hello. <laughs> um, yay. I know I can never get this because it's reversed. It's like, it's, it's reversed. It's like look over there. <laughs> her trying no, to look over that. there. <laughs> Um, okay, we have a really exciting episode today. We have two amazing guests, which we'll tell you about in just a minute. But first, let's uh, we got a little news to share with you. Um, Genevieve, what did you, you had something. What was, what did I dig up today? It's actually quite a little gem. So if anybody remembers the Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> animated series back in the 80s, well, it's missing its final episode. However, that problem has just been solved because a group of fans have made an animated The Requiem, which is the final episode for Dungeons and Dragons, the cartoon. Oh. How exciting is that? So apparently the script was already available online. The official script for Requiem was available online and a group of fans took the script and made some cartoon magic out of it. So that is something that is now available for everybody to see. I believe you can see it on YouTube. That is Dungeons and Dragons animated series Requiem. It is it is fan made. So it's not That's official. So cool. I will be doing that after this. <laughs> um okay and this is something I'm very excited about for you know reasons. Um so Renegade's Renegade Studios has announced an extension to its partnership with Hasbro <laughs> to produce games. So if you guys remember, they came out with the Power Rangers uh game Heroes of the Grid um back in 2018. Well now they are going to extend extend that to include games for Transformers. My Little Pony and GI Joe's. Um, so I'm personally just wanting to know: Can I play? Like, what class would Alita One be? Because I'm like, I kind of want to play myself in this game, and I want that to be a thing. And then I could just be like, Optimus, shut up, let me control things, because you make bad decisions. <laughs> I was saying that I wanted to be like the random little child character that they always have, and just be like, Optimus. <laughs> My mom can't find out about you. You gotta hide in your car form. Bumblebee, <laughs> transform back into a car now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, that's our news for the day, I think. Um, yeah, so now we are gonna introduce you to our amazing guests. So, obviously we're here because we all love role-playing games. That's what Fabled 42 was all about. Um, but I know I constantly get questions about, you know, oh, how do I figure out what voice I do for my character? And DMs who are like, how do I work on accents for all the different NPCs that I have to play? So we thought we'd bring in some experts to talk about that. Um, so first we have uh, Caitlin Robrock. Hello. She's an amazing voice actress. You might remember her as the voice of Tommy in Mr. Pickle. Mm -hmm. Um, you might also remember her from Mama Named Me Sheriff on Adult Swim, um, Retsuko's mom on the English dub of uh, Retsuko, and then she's done stuff for Thundercats Roar and Disney and Warner Brothers and so many things. <laughs> Amphibia. Yeah. She's done a lot. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yes. Thank you for being here. I have to say, a Gretzko gave me my second wind to survive COVID mm -hmm. a little longer. <laughs> you all of season three? Because I did. I, I binged it in one day. Nice. In nice. one day. And I, it was a roller coaster. <laughs> all right. So our next guest is Elizabeth Sarhoff. She is an international opera singer, an award-winning audio designer and creative director. Elizabeth brings decades of classical training into a modern world. And that is absolutely exciting. I have a few opera singer friends and I gotta say those vocals, golden. Oh my God. She began her operatic career in France at the age of 18. So I'm already <laughs> jealous. <laughs> I'm already jealous of your life. And <laughs> 
performed in major halls throughout America, Europe, and Asia, and has sung in 17 languages. She so is, yeah, we'll definitely be talking to you about accents. <laughs> <laughs> just a bit, just a tad. Uh, she is equally at ease with performing for a 4,000 seat theater or recording in her customized home studio. Thank you so much for being here. That is an amazing <laughs> repertoire. Thanks like, for having me. My gosh. <laughs> So thank you, ladies. So as you guys know, our uh, theme for today, uh, the theme of the show for today is giving voice to your character. So basically how to how to give your characters in D&D the proper voice, accent, vocal inflections that they need to sound convincing when we're role playing. Right. And I know, Caitlin, I know you said you've not played D&D, but that's okay. We'll um, but you know what it's like to be given a character and having like a brief description of it. Maybe mm -hmm. you've got a picture of it. Maybe you know what world it lives in, um, which is everything yeah. they to do with their characters. Yeah. And then Elizabeth, you know pretty much everything there is to know about the voice and how to use the voice and how to properly use the voice because we can talk about that too so oh yeah i can talk about like me i love long. playing like the orcs <laughs> and all those other characters so you know protecting your voice mm -hmm. <laughs> um but i guess let's start off so so caitlin hmm. from the work that you've done if say you are approaching a character and let's say you've got a picture and it's like this little gnome and it exists in this fantasy world that is very medieval-y like mm -hmm. um and they're kind of a rogue like stealthy sneaky like to play pranks on people how would you approach developing a voice for something like that hmm well first to see what gender it presents as, is it male or female? Mm -hmm. And then I look for age. Is it younger? Is it older? Is it in the middle? Um, is it kind of chaotic neutral where it just causes craziness for the sake of craziness? Is it malicious? Is it good hearted, but just makes things tricky? And since it's a gnome right away, your size can help dictate what sound might come out if it's more character, more realistic. That's how I would come at it, so. Okay, excellent. Um, and Elizabeth, what exactly is going on in the voice when Caitlin or you or someone is doing all of that craziness? Like, oh. <laughs> I was expecting, like, well, how would you come? Or how, no, well, oh, yeah, this is let's perfect. do that um, first. How would you do that? Because you've talked about vocal amazing characters okay. too. Well, basically, well, I get so excited about vocal technique. I love characters too and like how to approach them also like using technique and coming at it like not just from my emotional state or using um some of those characteristics to bring out the the personality of the character but also thinking about like oh physically like what if i did this with my vocal tract what would that do to the voice so um like the main thing is that as you're changing pitch your vocal cords uh they vibrate they like go they hit each other very very quickly um to create a pitch and if they are moving more quickly together, then it's a higher pitch. And if they're moving slower, then it's a lower pitch. And um, that's what creates like your fundamental pitch sound. Underneath that, in order for that to even go, you have to have a great breath. And you might even choose to play with the breath of the character and say like, oh, what happens if my breath is really low? Or what if it's really high and the air escapes really quickly? You know, you could play with things like that where a person would maybe be exasperated or maybe just not as in uh, good shape or maybe um, maybe they, if you think about um, somebody who has like a lot more down by their hips, that can also encourage a lower breath. So that physical presentation could change how they breathe. Um, and then you have your vocal cords coming together and all kinds of extra things that could cause that effect on the voice. So. If you had somebody who smoked a lot and had some sort of callousing or you know rasp on their cords, then you might have that sound. Uh, and then the main thing, I feel like the thing that's most fun to play with is like the cherry on top, that's the shaping. So anything above the vocal cords. Um, 
So you get into, well, are you going to put it in your nose? Are you going to lift your soft palate? Are you going to, you know, back off on the, the, are you going to give more open space to the back of the pharynx? So you have like more resonance room. So yeah, I, all of those things, <laughs> there's so much that happens to make a voice. I get really excited about that. <laughs> you have played many, many, many characters. Mm -hmm. and one thing that a lot of our dungeon masters have asked about is, you know, players are responsible for their character, but okay. dungeon masters are having to be the voice of all of the non-playable characters, the people that they interact with in the town, the bad guys that they fight. Mm -hmm. If you are having to voice numerous characters, how do you keep them all? How do you remember what they are? How do you find that placement again, keep them all in order? Pencil and paper, probably. <laughs> but let's see, from what the videos I've seen, I guess it would take matters of, if it's a townsperson, keep it as close to your natural voice as you can, since that would probably be the most common person someone would interact. And then if you come along for each uh, species type, you can have the uh, same voice for each species type and then make it higher, make it lower, change the placement of your teeth, change nasality, just that way, like you've got the definitive sound for an ogre, you've got a definitive sound for an elf, but then you can change within that, to differentiate different characters of each, if there needs to be a differentiation. Definition, definition. <laughs> uh, and then solution is Um, Gosh, because I'm sure there's so many species in d, &D. Oh yeah, so many, I mean, you know, like, lizard folk and ogres. I mean, basically, I mean, you've seen Lord of the Rings, so all of that plus Mm -hmm. Anything else you could possibly imagine? Lizards and birds and turtles. Yes. Animal, animal-based species. You can always go off of what sound do they make in actual life and try to tune it with words to see if it would come across. Ooh. So, uh, like, like a toad, either a toad or frog. One of them has the croak sound, so you can get a croak in your voice to make them talk. If it's a little old frog lady, it just has sentient words in it. Well, fancy words like in Lord of the Rings. Because they're pretty and elves are pretty, like this cat. Knock it off. <laughs> so if you have, you know, because like, you know, if you're working on, say, multiple animated series and you have your different characters, do you have mm -hmm. like a word or a phrase that you say to get you into that character? Yes. Um, when, when we find a line with a character that really sings with the cast or the vocal director and usually the creator of the show, we try to remember that as the hook line to bring it in. So like for Tommy on Mr. Pickles, I always just would go back to, I love being with my dog. He's the best. People say he kills other people, but I don't think so. So it's just, there's always a smile in it. There's a six-year-old rasp. It's always about the dog. And on Amphibia for Felicia, we had the hook line of, I'm so happy that Sprig is going to be joining our little tea shop. You know, you don't have to pay your employees when you're related to them. So she sits softly and she's Midwestern because it's all fake. She's, it's put, she's putting on airs. Right. <laughs> and I say, we actually, her name is Felicia, which I think we discovered in the booth because like, yeah, she would be the kind of girl who <laughs> the sound of her birth name. She likes all of the syllables. <laughs> it's three syllables. Okay. Uh, Elizabeth, I actually had a question um, on the lines of dungeon, you know, DMs are changing between a bunch of characters and they're the ones who are talking the most. Um, but also, I mean, like if you are going to, as a player, adopt the voice, for, a voice for a character. You also have to sustain the voice too. Um, let Let's dip a little bit into health and safety of <laughs> using your voice in a way that, again, you had mentioned. Um, if there is a character who you know, who you know has has smoker's voice or has you know like a deep rasp, like that can often kill the yeah. like the voice of, of actors or you know players yeah. or whoever like chooses to adopt that type of <laughs> that type of thing where it can like are is there a safe way to do those voices and and be able to sustain it over you know like the course of doing it for i mean because games can last anywhere from like four, four to six eight hours to 
you know. We can. <laughs> yeah. I can go so is there a safe way to do those voices? Yes, there is. Uh, quickly, I want to, is this, is that Caitlin? Is Caitlin that side or is she on that side? She's that way. We're flipped. I know. <laughs> You're okay. You're uh, I just wanted to say, we do a similar thing with opera arias um like especially when you find your voice like in a certain role or like a where it's sitting for a certain character mm -hmm. like there will be certain arias or phrases that you'll just end up going back to over and over and saying like oh that's the character in it so it was so fascinating to hear you talk about that and that's exactly the same thing in opera it's really cool um caring for your voice uh yes uh of course if you're doing something that is kind of uh, tearing or wearing on it for a while, it's not going to feel the best, but there are things you can do to make it feel better. Uh, first thing is hydrate a ton because uh, your vocal cords need to essentially have like a fluid topping on them that makes it so when they connect, it isn't very abrasive. So if you are doing something that sounds more abrasive and sound like if you have a rasp that you're continually putting on, um, having a little bit more fluid in your system to help protect your vocal cords is really helpful. Um, so just really hydrate a lot. That's really important. There are things that can dehydrate you, which will affect that if you drink too much caffeine. Uh, that can be a problem. If you which I think is a standing problem in the D&D community, at least with some of the DMs I know who might be doing way too many things and don't get enough sleep. <laughs> yes, this is true. I, I drink tons of tea, but I just drink a lot of water, a lot yeah. of water to offset that because I'm not willing to give up tea. Who wants to give up tea? But like, keep in mind, if you do it the night after heavy drinking, uh, it's probably going to tear your vocal cords down a little bit more than if you just had some tea and water. Uh, another really good thing, I actually have this here. Um, SOVT exercises are a really great reset that can help regulate uh, essentially your the way your vocal folds come together with breath pressure. So there's this really cool company called The Singing Straw, and I didn't know I'd be advertising for them, but I am. Um, <laughs> so anyways, I love this because I do exercises on straws all the time. And this one has like cool reusable straws inside that are ideally sized for exercises. Uh, I know a lot of voice, ex uh, voice actors that use this too. So you can just do like little glissandos, little slides, this kind of thing. And that helps uh, sort of just be a reset on your voice. So if you're starting to feel tired and especially like you're starting to feel like you need to really use a ton of pressure to make your vocal cords do it, that's a sign that they need to be reset. Um, and I would go take a straw or do you want a lip trill or a raspberry? There's so many different things. Semi-occluded vocal tract exercises, SOVT exercises. I have a video about it on my YouTube channel. I'm going to plug this. The Charismatic Voice. Please do. Uh, uh, I have like 130, I think it's around 130,000 subscribers right now. Yeah. All things vocal. Yeah. If you, yeah. If you yeah. know anything about the voice, please go to her channel. It's amazing. <laughs> also, her reaction videos are the best. <laughs> They're really fun. I love talking about what people are doing. Um, but um, so there is a video that I have on that where I go into details about different ones you can do and you should check yeah. that out. It's just a perfect reset button to to make sure that you don't do a lot of, of damage or that you're not hanging out in a bad spot for too long. Right. Caitlin, do you have any any tricks or tips? I mean, I know I have things that I do, like especially when I'm doing video game sessions where I'm yelling and screaming like Mm -hmm. hydrating but then you know it's like my hulk juice my raw honey you know what about you i think about you when i do my video game auditions because you, you have such a strong way of handling that i could never get the authoritative woman the 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 mercenary like those types of harder women are so rough right. to do so when i do it i try to think well what did Lindsay say she always <laughs> says, do it from the program relax your throat if like when she would when she did her service she's talking to people and she has to be concise and clear and there's whenever i would try to belt out or make a command i'd feel like a block pressure like i'd feel this pressure here so i'm not sure what that could Oh, no, we lost her. She'll be there. Oh, no. oh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, but a lot of it, you know, a lot of it is is breathing, you know, and you guys both touched on breathing before, but like, you know, making sure you have proper breath support. Yeah. Yeah, breath support for sure. 
I only have soda like Friday nights as my treat to myself because I really do like Coke floats. So <laughs> and it's got to be Diet Coke. And if I can, it will be caffeine free Diet Coke. But um, I try, I drink water every day. Mm -hmm. This is a really, I like this one a lot, Essentia. Um, over a I don't fill my own water if anyone cares. Like I, yeah, I don't mess around with what I'm drinking. <laughs> yeah. And actually, fun fact, uh, just a little tip for everybody. Like if you've got like your big hydro flask of water and you like to refill it, but sometimes it might get a little grody after a day or two, even though it's just water, they have... They have water bottles that have UV lights in the lid that'll purify your water. So when you're drinking on the go, you will always have cleaner, fresher water. And I figured out you could do the same thing with one of those UV flashlights if you just stick it on top of your hydro. <laughs> well, and it keeps it super cold. But once I started drinking like a 32 ounce cup a day I, and I can increase it, it, it's made a world of difference. So, so, so DMs, you might have to increase the number of bathroom breaks that you have during your sessions, you but, but you get used to it. Cause it's true, it's true you do. And, and I've told them like, I'm so sorry guys, I drank a truck of water today. Pardon me. And they're usually fine. Cause I grew up with a brother, so I'm fast. But, <laughs> super important. I never drank, I never drank coffee. I don't drink alcohol. I never drank tea before, so I've actually tried to get into the habit of tea, mm. especially at the end of last year when I had booked a few uh, new projects and it was winter. So I was noticing like, okay, I'm getting hoarse. Maybe I'm not sitting in a comfortable pocket. It may not be lubricated enough, like you said, Elizabeth. So I started trying to get more tea and ju even just to get used to it. And it, make, it makes a big difference. Yeah. I still don't like it a super a huge amount, but it, it's made a difference. Yeah. What about carbonated water? I know I've heard mixed things about this, Elizabeth. I think you've actually, didn't you do a video about this or am I making that up? I feel oh, like you've talked, maybe we did it in the lesson. I don't know. We might've talked in the lesson. I've actually had that comment or that question come up a bunch recently um, from folks uh, like associated with the channel, like in a Discord server or uh, Patreon or just like kind of anywhere within the channel. A lot of people have been asking about carbonated and uh, for me, as I go into recording sessions too, where I'm singing the recording session, I will never take a carbonated water in with me. Um, and that's mostly because I don't want to have to deal with holding back the pressure of a burp when I'm singing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but ultimately, like it still does hydrate you. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, it can, uh, yeah, it's, I wouldn't, I wouldn't ever drink it before doing a session uh, and probably for like a little while before a session. What, 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 what do you do with that? Damage? Does it, it doesn't like, because I, I think this was maybe like a year or so. I know there was these weird things. It's like the carbonation is, dentists were saying it's hurting your teeth. And oh, I don't, I don't really think that that's true. I mean, I'd have to look up some more stuff yeah. on it. But like ultimately, like your food tube and your esophagus are different tubes. And the carbonated <laughs> water is going down your food tube, not your voice tube. Hopefully. <laughs> So, that is the takeaway for the whole day. Your are two different things. <laughs> because they didn't really think about carbonated water as opposed to soft drinks, which are problematic. So they might just be saying, you know, if you drink those carbonated soft drinks, they're bad for you, probably to elucidate the sugary sodas, not the carbonation. Uh, plus, carbonated water doesn't taste like anything, and you've got weird bubbles. Like, that's not weird. <laughs> I'm not a fan of carbonated water, but that's just me. That's cool. You do you. Live your truth. <laughs> True. I definitely drink lots of carbonated water, just never when I'm close to sessions. Right. <laughs> the belchy DM. <laughs> or when you get that. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, I'm going to have to redo that take, or they play it back and you hear it, and they're like, sounds good to me. <gasps> You're like, Oh, I actually, I have a question. Can I insert my own question here? Of course. Is that yeah. weird? Um, what do you guys do when you have a stomach that's really loud and growling in a session? Maybe because you had too much carbonated water two hours before. Same. I actually had engineers stop me and be like, is that your stomach? <laughs> and I did, I, I don't, I haven't had it happen very many times, but I did at one point, one, one director was like, do you want to go grab an apple or something? <laughs> okay. I don't know, Caitlin, have you ever had that happen to you? 
Oh, Can did you freeze him? again? Oh no. Oh no. Refresh. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's occasionally like I, I have it happen mostly like if I do early morning sessions, like I have quite a few Midwest clients or East coast clients. And so I'm doing sessions at like seven in the morning and sometimes the belly's growling. Caitlin, have you ever had any issues with tummy growls? And stuff? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you eat too close to your session, your stomach acid is starting to break down all the food you ate. So if it was a heavy lunch, you're more likely to have, hmm the boiling aisles in your stomach. Uh, and it could be like spicy foods, uh, tacos, I like tacos. Um, so I try, to, I try to make sure I've eaten like two hours before a session so it has time to like settle in. And then if you're really hungry going into a session that could also cause for hunger growls, you could take an antacid and that'll help. Oh. That'll help like get the calcium in there to kind of calm things down. It'll prevent, um, It'll like be preventative for any GERD because I get GERD sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I'm still trying to figure that out if I need to have a medicine for that. Because you don't, if you have chronic GERD, you don't want that because it'll affect your throat. It'll it can right. risk risk to ulcers or throat cancer. Like well, like keep not, not a defining factor, but it it could aid those types of developments. Yeah, and I know I I've, I've had friends who have issues with um whatever the disorder. Uh, what is it where it pushes up in your throat, the bile up in your throat. Sure, um, yeah. Gastro. Yeah. Gastro mm -hmm. Yeah. And they have to sleep sitting up and, yeah. you know, it's good to sleep up. at an angle. Uh, it's good to sleep on your left side. I, I've, I've read lots of articles about this uh, because mm -hmm. I had suffered it a lot and I noticed a difference, but you know, Prilosec, my parents and their doctor swear by taking it every day instead of the the directions on the box. But I would say talk to your healthcare provider. Yes. But having antacids on hand could help settle things down before it even gets to be a problem. Or having like hard candies, mm -hmm. where you're you're getting a little bit of a sugar influx that's flavoring. You know, like you're drinking the flavor juice when you're sucking on it, and that'll help calm down a stomach as well. Or saltine crackers. Same kind of thing. Like if, if you treat it like it was nausea, the elements that help treat nausea can help treat preventative bubbles and, and hunger pains, things like that. I'm totally going to try an antacid out next time because yeah. I'm more likely to be hungry before a session and then really well, not. I don't like especially before before sessions, so and and yeah, when you're yeah. hungry, you get like acid stuff too, because it's like yeah. piling up. Like we need food to disperse ourselves in. That's yeah. why we're here. So you have to eat regular meals or have at least some decent snacks throughout your day, like apple right. or, or even a bag of chips, like oily foods you want to stay away from, but sometimes those greasy oily foods can also help a little bit. You know, I, I had a, I had a session where I was starving and I was so dry and I was drinking water, but unless you were drinking like a bunch of water the day before, it's not in your system as well. Right. That's when we say drink it before. So I ate some potato chips and it just, <laughs> oh, that saturated fat just coated. Oh, that saturated fat saturates your throat. <laughs> and I feel like a new woman. But um, basically, yeah, water's your friend. Antacids are good. I like the 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 smoothies kind, like from Tom's or generic mm. brand. But they're not as gritty, and they just get right to work. So. And then a lot of people, Lindsay, you would know this. They swear by the neem jong. Oh yeah, hope juice. The hope juice and they make lozenges now. It's not just the pack of black mm. blood. You can have a lozenge. Yeah. And that's so much better. And that's good. It's just it's again, Elizabeth, it's like it's just stuff that coats the throat, you know. Yeah. And, yeah Fred Pladashore uses it a lot and because he's all over video games everywhere. Yeah. And that's why it's called Hulk Juice, because he was the voice of Hulk. There are uh, a lot of opera singers that struggle with acid reflux, um, mm -hmm. and there have been a lot of research, or there's been some research done trying to figure out why opera singers have it come up so often. One of the sort of interesting things is um, I, I've read that there's a stipulation that it happens because it, there's so much diaphragmatic use with mm -hmm. opera, and it's, con it's constantly just against your stomach. Um, so a lot of opera singers struggle with having acid reflux and have to be on more strict diets to function with that. I had it for a few years as well. And I did um, essentially, I wasn't Prilosec, but I took something similar to it. Um, but ultimately for me, it went away when I just didn't let as much stress into my life. I had to be really deliberate. Most, I can't say that that's going to work for everybody, but right. 
Um, I, I was definitely, I was definitely overstressing myself way too much and getting in my head. And, uh, I think that was, that was partly my, my cause, but yeah. boy, it was hard to deal with when I had it. It was really hard. And maybe it wasn't the stress. Maybe it was, uh, maybe I got to a place where I was just eating other things more consistently. Yeah. Not sure. And Elizabeth, thought you was hard. Uh, I, right now I usually sing things that are a little more suspicion. So like between mezzo and soprano, mm -hmm. if I'm singing in like a large role, I would be singing, uh, the character that dies usually. <laughs> So uh, that tends to be like a young dramatic soprano in some mm -hmm. form or fashion. Um, so but if I'm doing in uh, the opera world, <laughs> right. a lot of like, is also an amazing singer. Yeah, as opposed to power. Oh, his voice can be heard yodeling in. Is it Disney France? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my god. We revamped uh, Small World out in Disneyland Paris and they couldn't use any of the original soundtrack from uh -huh. Disneyland because it was all all the sound effects were married to the 60s tracks so that there were no separate sound effects. So they yeah. reorchestrated it and they recreated all the sound effects but the one they didn't have like that was easy to do was the yodel. Yeah. So I had gone in and just did the little yodel like so that little the little children with their clappy shoes <laughs> yes. like like <laughs> flashbacks of, of the ride for me <laughs> like you just brought me right into that ride well and my a friend of mine they they went park hopping and they filmed the ride there to see like look we find your voice so i could actually hear it through a video Aww. and then i've done some safety spiels for it too i think for the tokyo park of please remain seated in your boats at all times keep small children with you but <laughs> um, well you mentioned you mentioned paris that brings up a good question is how do you guys approach accents? So again, obviously like within RPG games, we're playing characters. They can be from anywhere in any universe in any world. And Caitlin, I know you voiced a lot of different dialects. Elizabeth, you've sung in more languages than I think I've ever even heard. So <laughs> do you wanna do you wanna go first on this, Caitlin? Or what do you what do you want to go? You would definitely be the pro for this. In my experience, the the strongest way to kind of learn a basic accent, it's, it's all in the vowels. Um, and then certain consonants are pronounced a certain way, but the, the there's that phonetic library that has all the accents in the world. And they've got like, you know, people from all different countries reading poems. So you could hear pronunciations of all the different ways to say A, E, I, O, U, all the consonants. A lot of them are like from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. So I do wish there was an updated version because hmm. people these days talk yeah. even differently in all different countries. Um, and there's, but yeah, like a lot of it, you know, you would consider it to be a stereotypical accent, which isn't a terrible one if it's meant to just kind of be a one-off fun character, but if you want to have an authentic character that's being representative of that culture, you want to make sure you're getting this accent correct. Right. And it should always go to somebody who already speaks that or is capable of speaking it before just someone who isn't fluent in it taking a stab at it. <laughs> at least right. that's my belief. Yeah. Um, so with for me, uh, singing is usually in other languages, and sometimes I have to go into different dialects, which is interesting. Uh, almost entirely, we work through IPA, International Phonetic Alphabet, at first. Yeah. Um, I became extremely familiar with that. I even taught a computer how to understand people by teaching it IPA. So it's like a like a Siri or Alexa for self-driving cars. I had to, pro it was weird. I like programmed a computer. What, how did that happen? It's because I knew IPA. Okay. <laughs> Um, IPA is fascinating and it's not the beer. International phonetic alphabet is where that comes from. Now, um, there are just so many different ways to pronounce different words and different consonants that even IPA can't completely grasp that, but you can see little things. Uh, mostly, if I was looking at a D&D &D character, I wouldn't say, oh, I want to have an Irish accent for this character. I would say, what aspects of this character remind me of different places in the world and then maybe pick different things from those different 
uh, places because your D&D character isn't going to be from Ireland, right? And so I would say, okay, well, what if I wanted to have a twin? Maybe this this is a little, like maybe it's homegirl, but <laughs> you know, maybe at the same time, uh, she's got a, a sh- uh, um, like a lateral SH sound that she does sometimes because she's got some sort of uh, Asian background. Uh, I know in China that sh- they have like a really hard sound like that. Um, or maybe uh, similarly, uh, all of her um, THs. TH is one of those consonants that I'm consistently working with people when they're singing in English, uh, working with them to shift where their TH is, if, depending on what country they're from. So one of the really, really difficult ones, I think. So a way to make your character sound just a little bit exotic is to shift your TH to a different place. So instead of saying the with your tongue coming out all the way. So this is going to be great, guys. Let's talk about tongue placement. All right. My tongue is out pretty far. The, if you just say the, it instantly feels like, wait a second. uh, You're not from around here. Or uh, if you wanted to go a little more French, the. Right, you could make your your the it could be a z sound instead so you could be pulling different you pick consonants that would be difficult uh, and you can like play with the placement of those and try to always make your character have that uh, or um like caitlin was saying your consonants uh, just by going to different regions even within the u.s there's so many um like oh is your o going to be really uh really short and small or uh, is there always going to be tons of diphthongs? Hey, or I, or you, um, where you really lean in to different vowel sounds within like one vowel. Right. Uh, a diphthong. I'm not sure if everybody knows what a diphthong is. It's I is a great example. It's both a combination of a and e. I, I know what a thong is. <laughs> thong, 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 thong. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, we should make like a, a cover song of that now and talk about different vowels. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, done. Um, but so it can be really fun to play, um, not with just like going for a certain accent, but rather taking different things from other accents and making your own one for a character. Caitlin, do you have, or both of you, I guess, did you, do you, either of you have a, a character or a role that you've done? Um, that had a really difficult, or that had an accent that that just took you a while to learn to get. And yes, I'll go on this side. This yeah, is going to be so okay. dumb. It was in English, guys. It was in English. I was singing Violetta in English at English National Opera, and there's tons. There's you can find it out there somewhere. Um, but I wasn't supposed to just sing in my English nor was I just supposed to sing with a British accent. It had to be the Queen's English. Mm -hmm. And after my first dress rehearsal, I got back a page of like three notes, or sorry, three pages of notes, just on how to get that English a little closer to the Queen's English. It was painful. Painful. Okay. Where were you singing? Where were you singing it? Uh, English National Operas in London. Okay, so, okay. You of course, you get the most speakers. notes. <laughs> you had local speakers critiquing your accent. It's like, well, let me <laughs> let me yes. tell you how I think how the queen the queen's English is spoken. That is great. Yes, <laughs> it was that, this is something that you know we've worked on is that a lot of times you sing in an accent differently than you might actually speak in that accent. So I feel like there's- yes. yes, because singing is always elongated vowels. I, so I, my first year out of high school, I spent in France. And by the end of that time, I was fluent in French. I'd been living with families. I'd studied French for five years before. Um, I came back to the US and I'd even studied at a French conservatory at this point, singing. Came back to the, the US and a couple of years later, I was working with the coach from the Metropolitan Opera on a French role and she ripped me a new one because cool. while I was trying to sing my French like I would speak it and that often meant that I didn't really uh, when I elongated the vowels I didn't make them pure enough essentially or I didn't drop my jaw to project them in the right way uh it is it is different 
uh, if you spoke the same way that you sang, you would sound much too formal and over enunciated all the time. Mm. Um, Caitlin, was there anything difficult that you've ever had to do? And uh, on the flip side, is there an accent or voice that is your favorite to play with and do? Uh, good question. There was one character for Thundercats. It has not aired yet, so I can't talk too much about it, but it was the opposite of me in every way. Um, so I, there was an accent I had to put on it that it took me a while to like find the groove for it where it was melodic and it sounded like, you know, okay, this is what you would hear this accent be pronounced. And, but I had to do it in an affectated voice. I wish I could explain more, but like when that episode comes out, you'll see what I mean. But, <laughs> so you know, that means a, has to be watching Thundercats Roar. You have to, yeah. But like I am a English female young woman. This character is the opposite of all three of those things. So when you see it, you'll 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 see what I mean. Um, the easiest is Felicia because my parents grew up in the Midwest, so I grew up hearing their way of speaking. So it's usually my A's that come across as very Midwestern. Um, but I grew up in San Diego, so it, it shouldn't be all the time. But sometimes if I'm really stressed or I'm not even thinking about it, it'll just roll in and I won't even notice. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Dishonored 2, we had to be witches. And that was a very guttural uh, character. And they had to speak kind of in a Shakespearean tone since they were these witches but they were like elite, like they thought themselves better than the average player in that game. So we, we had to kind of have a very specific way of speaking and it wasn't a specific accent or dialect, but we had to have a specific way of speaking, a melodic pattern. And that one was tricky. Yeah. And I think that was my first video game. Yeah, it, I, I definitely had to do some weird ones. I think one of the, the weirdest for me was Wasteland 3. I had to play, it's called like a breather character. So they have this raspy sound and they've got a Southern, like a, a West Virginia accent, but then the director just kept saying, well, I need you to sound more like you're drugged out, but I need to hear that in your voice. Not, and I'm like, not even really saying like many words or not, you know? So it's like, okay, West Virginia accent on drugs, shooting at people. Okay. <laughs> Were you just like, what which drug sir <laughs> I, I, I have the idea and but who's capable of doing that mix right right yeah and that happens a lot with deaths is like how does it sound if you're decapitated you know things like that it doesn't sound like anything your throat got cut in half <laughs> you know, there's a sound trust me what? there's one coming out soon and i had to die so many different ways and the director was very specific about wanting a different death sound for all of the various ways that I had died. <laughs> okay. So okay. yes, we could have an entire episode about video game deaths. That's 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 a whole other thing. <laughs> if you want to know what I'm talking about, go play Rage 2. I die five million ways in that game. So. Um, Elizabeth, is there like from a singing standpoint, is there a a, an, a language that is easiest? I mean, I've heard mixed things like, oh, Italian's one of the easiest languages to sing in. And Ameri American English is actually one of the hardest uh, accents to sing in. Yeah, American English can be very difficult to sing in because of the R coloration. Um, so R singing, R is like just not considered a pretty sound. <laughs> so we tend to elongate uh, instead of singing R. <laughs> I feel like if you push the R, it's automatically country. <laughs> like country would have the R. Yes, exactly. And uh, actually, I recently, I did a reaction to Disturbed recently seeing The Sound of Silence. And I was so impressed by the way that he sometimes leaned into that R sound to actually make the sound, I think, a little bit more, like, it felt a little more raw somehow. Uh, and he used it to have like an uglier sound that sometimes I think mm -hmm. because he's was, he was more about the message. So he, he used that. But uh, American English isn't easy to sing in. Uh, it's easier to sing with a British accent. A lot of times I direct singers, if they're fairly difficult to understand, immediately going to a little bit of a British accent, it tends to heighten the consonants 
and elongate the vowels so it also creates a pretty tone at the same time. Uh, Italian is a fairly la easy language for many people to sing in because the vowels uh, are simpler. There are fewer vowel sounds in Italian than there are in English, for example. Um, I personally love singing in French now, and that's because I worked on it for so many years uh, and eventually got it so super specific and that's mostly because i had such a long journey with it personally uh, french is considered not a good language to sing in by many people because there are nasal vowels so instead of just saying oh they'll go oh and part of it goes through your nose which is generally not considered a good thing when you're singing so when you're uh singing in french and you're trying to balance that nasal vowel a lot of times people use a lot less nasality. They'll use just the teensiest bit of nasality to get the French nasal vowel in for singing. Then, And that's how uh, that's one of the ways that French speaking and French singing is so different as well. Gotcha. <laughs> um, I know we've only got like 10 minutes left here. Uh, is Do you guys have a favorite voice that you've done? Yes. It looks like, yup. <laughs> I have three. Um, I absolutely love little old ladies. They're just my favorite, <laughs> my favorite voice to do. And this one is my most favorite voice of all. Oh my God, exactly I what I believe I would be like as a grandmother. Um, uh, <laughs> I don't even know where it would be on the East Coast, but you know, the New York accent, that one's real good. Where you get the the hard days and the R's and what the what have you there like uh, from Rocky or from uh, uh, what do you call it like I don't even know is this Jersey is it Brooklyn where is it from? <laughs> I don't know I don't care you want to fight about it <laughs> <laughs> and of course Southern just because that growing up all my family was from the South and the Midwest so that's easy to do and oh look at you Lindsay you look so nice today. So those, those are my three favorites and I'll, and I'll stick them in like I'll get characters like well they didn't give me an age so what if I did this or like and if they don't ask for an accent you don't really give them one on an audition first take but there's been characters where it's like this would come off really funny with a New York accent so I there was one Oh, it was fairly recent, but it was very, it was a very pronounced dialogue. So I, oh, it, <laughs> it was a pirate. But instead of well, the first take, I did like, you know, a pirate voice. And then the second one, I did like, yo ho, I am captain this person. Welcome aboard the SS Buttercup. <laughs> I, I know what auditions are talking about, and I totally threw a, I, I totally threw a Middle Eastern accent on that as my second take. You know what I'm talking about? Okay. Yep, I know you're right. like, we be pirates and we's after the treasure. What say you? Aye, aye. Like, it just sounded really funny to me. This pirate is New York. So I thought, why the hell not? I mean, we're 99% of the auditions you do, you're not going to book. So just have fun with it. Yeah. And you'll show you're a fun person. Or you'll do something and they're like, what the heck was that? Bring her back in. Have a <laughs> for her. So you never know. It, sometimes you throw spaghetti at the wall, and sometimes it is. That's amazing. I am. Um, I had. I haven't done a, as big a voice acting as uh, you guys have, of course. But um, the there's sort of two things that I really enjoyed playing and have pulled back a couple times. One is a passive aggressive AI. Um, I just <laughs> love being like, "Well, that was lovely. Now I'm going to kill you." Right. This kind of like just kind of back. I, I love uh, that AI of, yes, it's elegant and it's detached. And it's like, oh, well, you're going to die now. And that's really, I think it's so fun. I don't know what it is. Passive aggressive can be really fun. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, that was the choice you made. I see. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. you have to live with it. <laughs> exactly. It's like we have to channel our portal voice, right? Right. <laughs> um, and Gladys, that was her name. Uh, and then the other thing that I love doing that I, I get to do fairly often is creature noises, like, like making funny noises, They're like, right? I just, yep. I love making fun 
uh, creatures, I uh, I have a secret um, talent, which we kind of discussed earlier, but not really. I'm really good at actually like big burps and pitching them and, and doing oh. all kinds of things with them. So I have my burps in several characters. That's funny. That, I that love that. that something. Yeah, I feel, I like, I like creature noises. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I, I recently had to do, and literally the direction was, it's a dog, but it's a spider. So <laughs> make it sound like an insect dog spider. And I was like, I'm like go. And you're like, okay. <laughs> bark, bark, web, web. I am spider dog. Did I book it? <laughs> um, the, Okay, the chat is requesting a burp. Oh, chat? Just a second, I'm gonna store it up here. The Twitch chat, the Twitch chat. Saying? Are they talking about us? What are they saying? They are, they are. They are. They are love you. Are in the chat? <laughs> <laughs> like, not for no reason. Like, um... Oh, that was a little one. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> a little? <laughs> that was a little okay. one. Just a second, we're gonna store up some more. Okay, Jess, you can clean your hair and have a bubble this your job. Get the bubbles, yeah. Mm -mm. Oh, it's stored up. Now it's there. It's right there. Okay. Oh, goodness. Uh. <laughs> Wait for it, though. Okay, so it's going to, like, it's going to simmer for a bit. Let's talk, and then it'll come out. Okay, then it'll come back. <laughs> Just okay. cut it out whenever it happens. We will be okay. We'll be fine. Don't stifle um, our... We will be... Uh, so it's... <laughs> Yeah, proud of you. So they'll they'll so keep guys, running. Like uh, once you get them going, they just start rolling, and then you just record like fifty burps. Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, you did, that's such a good little burper. Yes, you, your mother was a good burper too, you know, until she was. Oh, um, in the last couple of minutes that we have, do you guys have any like I don't know tips or tricks that you can just share with people that you know who are just starting to dive into this character work and still new and. Yes, I have a poem. I have a poem that somebody Ooh. gave me once and I use it for um, all kinds of things. Um, Tish Hicks from the VO Dojo related this to me, but she said it was somebody else that related it to her and I don't remember who. Um, uh, there are like six qualities and I do this with people singing in character voice too. So it's high or low how does it go? So let's give like an adjective. Fast or slow, so the rate that a person's speaking at. Uh, how does it flow? So that'd be like the rhythmic pattern, especially if there's on like a stutter in there maybe. Uh, where does it go? So like, um, like do you put it in your nose? Do you put it behind your eyes? And then use your pie hole. And look, try some things out here. Like, what if you have like, like a, like a really big jaw, or like a flip down to here, like, or if you, uh, like Caitlin mentioned earlier, what if the jaw was jetting forward and you can try yeah. things like that. So I love that poem. There you go. Tips or tricks. I've got a million, but I think the two biggest that would help anybody is this takes time. It really does. And everybody comes from a different background. I would say I had the least amount of opportunities and experience when I started. Because I started like, like I knew I wanted to do it when I saw Aladdin in 1990, but I didn't get anywhere near actually attempting to go for it in terms of like classes and workshops and learning until about 2005. And that's a whole other story for another day. But I would say I started in 2005, learning about it, practicing, getting those characters and those voices. I didn't get my first real agent until 2013, eight years later. And only in 2018 did I start booking Thundercats and Amphibia where it's like, hey, I'm getting noticed. And nowadays I feel very successful where I am. So it does take a long time. And I had no money. I had a nine to five job that had to come first. So on my days off, I would drive up to LA and do workshops and classes. So if it takes 15 years, like it did me, as long as you're having fun doing it, it will pay off. You will find those opportunities and you will make a name for yourself. And opportunities will come from that that you don't even know you were meant to do. So it can happen, just be patient. And 
always reach out and ask for help and advice. Don't make a demo after a class. That's another big one. Don't do that. <laughs> but you're going to hear a lot of advice and tips, the same pieces of advice and the same like methods of acting from so many sources. And you're going to think you get it, but one day, but you won't be getting it. And you're like, how am I not getting it? It's so obvious. One day it's just going to click. Like that's what they mean by having a point of view. That's what, you know, it's not about the voice. It's about the acting and the point of view. And of course that makes sense. But one day it just hit me on an audition. Like this is what they were always talking about. This point of view, the voice came with it. I loved what I did. And I feel like, hey, this is exactly what they want. I did the very best I could do because I knew exactly who this person was because it just finally clicked what the POV meant. So you're going to circle that drain a thousand times before it'll finally click. And once it clicks, then you'll start really busting down doors. Even if it's just your name, your reputation and your work, even if you don't ever book, that reputation will help you. So if when you feel like it's, I've done this for four years and I suck, like you really don't, this is part of the learning and it takes that long. Not everyone's an overnight sensation and the people who are, they're savants, they're, they're lucky but it doesn't mean you can't do it if you don't focus on it and really practice. Yeah. And it's, it's so achievable. So real quick, where can we find you on the interwebs? And do you have anything that you want to announce or anything that you want to shout out? Elizabeth, I know you have something on Friday, which actually the chat was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, did my it's Saturday. <laughs> Well, let's see, on Friday, uh, it's a big thing. It's the, uh, we planned it about a month ago starting. It's our 100,000 subscriber party. We're almost at 130,000 now, so it's gonna be 130,000, but it's our subscriber party. Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific time, it's gonna be live on YouTube. We've got giveaways. If you guys want a microphone, if you want a Blue Yeti microphone, you can sign up to win during that party. Uh, the singing straw that I was talking about, that's gonna be there. Um, you can get a voice lesson with me. There's lots of really cool things. Um, and then also on Saturday, I'm actually going to be Twitch streaming on the Charismatic Voice on Twitch. It'll be our first stream ever. It's going to be our kickoff of a D&D &D All Bard campaign. Uh, I am writing a ballad with this Kalimba. I've already Ooh. written the Song of Rest with this Kalimba, just so you know. Uh, so we're going to be streaming and our first I will be I will be streaming along with them. Yes. So yes, enjoy. Yes. So that's Saturday at 10.30 a.m. And if you want to find out more, you can always go to YouTube, The Charismatic Voice. Caitlin, hey, where are you on the internet? Hmm? Me? Where, where are you on the internet? Where can people find you? Oh, under a rock. Um, I want to <laughs> Uh, I'm on Twitter, Caitlin Robrock. I think I'm K Robrock at Instagram. I'm really bad at social media, but okay. I do read all my messages. I try to promote. I don't have anything coming out just yet because everything I've got is under NDA, but I can say that there's more Amphibia coming and there's more Thundercats coming on the horizon. I've got some more work through those. Uh, and that's about it. Um, I'm kitty sitting, so uh, there's a cat here and it's a nice cat. And that is it. Oh. I'm so boring. I'm sorry. Oh. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for this. This was amazing. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us. Really <laughs> you guys are fun. This was uh, a lot of fun. Oh, I'm glad you liked it. We did, I, did I roll a nat 20 on charisma? Is that what you say? Look at you! 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 Before we sign off, um, I just have to let everybody, all our viewers know, the people in the chat, um, that we still have the raffle that's going on. Um, you can win another game um, off of Steam, uh, another free game if you uh, put raffle in the chat so do that right now all you have to do is type in raffle into the chat to be eligible to uh win the free game in the raffle but you have to stay until the realms of ukador starts and that is going to be starting at seven o'clock realms of ukador um and we also have another episode for you next week that's going to be awesome it is entitled leveling up and this is for people who have made 
their business, who have made their passion their business. And we are going to be having on the show our guest, Fawn Davis, who has worked at ILM. He owns Fonco Studios here in Los Angeles. He is a fantastic creator who's done everything from miniature work on films such as Coraline to uh, mm. uh, CGI and uh, miniature work on uh, films like Star Wars. And yeah, he's he's yeah. done it all. He's, he's done, done it all. all. He's got the <laughs> All right. So that's what we have in store for you next week. Remember to put raffle in the chat to be eligible to win that game off of Steam. And come back at 6.30 in 25 minutes for the Realms of Bukador, the next chapter. Very exciting. And Chris will announce the winner of the raffle. Woo! Raffle! Woo. I, I can't be in the raffle, can I? You can't. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> raffle in the chat for me. I didn't even know there was a chat. What's a chat? Is there a chat for me? <laughs> I can't find the chat. That's fine. I'm cool. I'm That's okay. Cool. I entered it for you. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much for coming yes. on. Thank oh, you. Wow. Thank you for having us.